Wszystko zaczęło się od króla Jagiełły. Mała Łodzia stała się miastem, które w XIX wieku rozwijało się najszybciej na świecie. W ciągu zaledwie 60 lat od powstania pierwszej manufaktury powstaje przemysłowa, wielonarodowościowa metropolia. Jednak wiatry historii nie zawsze jej sprzyjały. To, co zniszczył los, odbudowują łodzianie. Nasza Łódź. Miasto wielkich szans. Od 600 lat w sercu Polski i Europy. Jesteśmy Polakami. Jesteśmy niezwykłym społeczeństwem. Zawsze w obliczu wielkiego wyzwania potrafimy się mobilizować. Potrafimy stawić czoła wielkim wyzwaniom. Bo nie potrafimy stać obojętnie. Bo obchodzi nas bezpieczeństwo i przyszłość naszych dzieci. Bo wierzymy, że nadzieja zwycięża apatię, lęk i strach. Bo mimo wszelkich przeciwności nigdy się nie poddajemy. Potrafimy ciężko pracować, wspierać się i działać razem. Bo zależy nam na naszej ojczyźnie, naszym osiedlu, naszej ulicy. Bo chcemy naszych niezbywalnych praw i wolności. Bo nie oddamy naszych marzeń. Nadchodzi punkt zwrotny. Szanowni Państwo, witam serdecznie. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to welcome you after the break. Uh, I have a great pleasure to uh, invite a special guest. The guest uh, I do not have to introduce. So, in a moment you will hear a lecture uh, by the father of the Polish economic transition, the person who always steers emotions, Professor Leszek Balcerowicz. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I should not comment uh, this kind of introduction, so I would like to start the topic. I will not take more than 15 minutes. This will be the introduction. And the rest of the time, uh, 10 minutes will be for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the most important thing from the practical and theoretical view when we are looking at the social sciences, something which uh, results in huge consequences, this is making a difference between the public and private uh, property. Uh, with, and based on this uh, distinction, the difference between capitalism and socialism. One comment in this context. Words uh, stir emotions. Emotions sometimes can, take, can lead to mistakes. Capitalism doesn't have good emotional uh, connotation and socialism has uh, different meanings. Socialism has lots of different meanings. To some people, socialism, in accordance with the original Marxist meaning, is the dominance of the state ownership and to others it means a huge social expenditure. Uh, when we look at the second meaning, all the Western countries are socialist. All of them have expenditure, more than 40% of their budget um, is spent uh, of, for social things. But what is protective in most cases, uh, what protects the welfare of the Western states? Well, they didn't introduce socialism in this private meaning. That is the dominance of the state's property, ownership. So this is of key importance. We know that after World War II, as a result, of the Russian invasion, Poland received socialism. 
which uh, ended in uh, 1980, and all the data and comparative analysis on this topic uh, clearly show that this was evil system uh, due to different uh, aspects. Firstly, the standard of life. Of course, in initially it was improved, but then the dynamics slowed down and the dynamics was much slower than in the countries with capitalist market economies. And then uh, all the socialist uh, countries suffered a crisis uh, in 1989 in Poland and also in the Soviet Union or in, in Russia. It was not an exception. It is also worth remembering that the dominance of the state ownership eliminates the uh, uh, possibility of democracy. There is no case of a country where there would be this kind of property dominating and at the same time there would be long-term elect elections in long-term perspective and there would be the rule of law, so the, the ex executive authority that would not dominate uh, the, uh, the, the court's authority. We, uh, I am afraid I cannot hear what they are saying.
Szanowni Państwo, chciałbym powiedzieć jedną rzecz. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to tell you that you are the speakers of this event. You are our guests. The forum is the Freedom Games. We are exchanging ideas. Do you know what the forum of exchange of ideas is about? It's that we allowed you to give your speeches, to have your say. And now there is someone who has different views than, than you. And you do not understand what the debate is. You are nothing different. You had your space on this stage. You had your say. You are our guests. And you do not allow us to... You were invited. Now you have not been invited. You were on the stage before. They were the speakers. Mikrofon, okej. Okay. Słuchajcie, e, państwo... So you've, they've ended their demonstration. We do apologize for this inconvenience. This is uh, the debate of the freedom of speech. And this was an example uh, how the freedom of speech should not look like. That, that was cancelling in action. So they didn't allow to speak uh, people who have who, who think differently. So Professor Bal Bartarowicz will be talking about freedom and maybe he will address uh, this situation. What was uh, the watchword of communists uh, who became the power in the Soviet Russia? Their catchphrases were the same as the catchphrases as these young communists. That, uh, the that the future is common, not private. So they respond to the word private, private being evil. So this kind of reaction, I don't think that it's based on, their, on, on reasoning. These clearly were emotions. So when we have such reactions, if we do not oppose such people using the persuasion, which should be loud and efficient, then uh, hostile hostilities are uh, start leading. And it's uh, really done by naive people. Law and Justice Party uh, uses uh, uh, naive people. What is happening during Law and Justice time? So uh, the, 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 this party is um, politicizing our courts. Uh, so the effects, the consequences uh, of the behaviors of these people are like that. They result from the situation, although I think it's a follow-up. It's a, an excellent example uh, which shows threats we need to oppose. So I would like to remind the elementary facts. Socialism in its classical version meant that the private uh, property of companies uh, was abolished. 
abolished. And it was published uh, by a Marxism who acclaim, Marxist who are claiming that they want to make uh, the workers free. Then uh, a different meaning of socialism was used. I mentioned about socialist states and it means that all the Western uh, states uh, uh, have huge social uh, spending. So, of course, it, it, in Poland we have this situation, but there was no disaster in the Western states um, in comparison to what has happened in the Tsars of yeah, Russia. Uh, in, in the Western states, companies, businesses uh, were not nationalized. Why? The private ownership of business is, is of key importance and it's not ideology, it's based on facts. You cannot falsify it. Firstly, if you if you are against private ownership and replace it by uh, the state ownership, then everywhere you are losing the economic distance towards these countries that maintain public property. So capitalism, if you are not afraid of, uh, of this word, it's not an exception, but if somebody really doesn't like uh, um, private business but loves democracy, uh, such people should remember that there is no case of a democratic uh, party uh, that would not have private uh, property. So the private property, private ownership is the necessary it's a precondition. So to have free election, to have the rule of law, you need to have private property. And the state ownership is enough to have socialist system. So you can read in uh, Wiki Wikipedia. So uh, it is a hard facts. These young people uh, are confused due to their emotions. So they, ha they have used my modest name, but they do not know uh, that there are so many people who deem this notion of private ownership as the right value, good value. Uh, I took part in the election in Silesia and uh, I was elected. I, I was not pretending that uh, I was involved in the economic transformations in Poland. To leave some, uh, some space, some time, I would like to proceed with the description of the current situation. The latest, the, the recent uh, years in Poland were um, the years uh, of the moral regression. Not every politician is, uh, is an example of uh, morality. And uh, the ruling party is really damaging, destroying these values. So they are using so much lie. Lies about uh, public, private uh, ownership after the year 1989. Secondly, we have the so-called systemic regression. So on the one uh, on the one hand, the prosecutor's office depends on the party, ruling party. So it is used as a tool to attack people who are against the politicians, and it and Jobro uh, has to pay for this, uh, he and his prosecutors, they have to be uh, made accountable for what they have done, and. And again, uh, Poland is being taken back to the state of the socialism of ownership. Before the law and justice, uh, we had uh, we had quite a lot of uh, state uh, property. Uh, the law and party, uh, law and justice have has in increased uh, this share. So the more uh, state property, the more lies uh, are producing. So uh, 
it affects democracy because if big large businesses uh, sponsors government this is not a just so there is the systemic uh, the, the, the systemic uh, worsening of the situation. So this, this is the situation we need to face. And we have to become mobilized. Financial advantage cannot decide on the continuation of this regression. And I have, I have to say this, and uh, I, I will always uh, mobilize people to take part in the election. So the attendance, the frequency, the frequency, the, the attendance uh, uh, will have huge uh, importance to the elections. I do hope that all the participants of the Freedom Games will take part in the election and that you will encourage other people to take part in the election. Once we do it, we will uh, come, we will take this moral regression to the stop. This regression has uh, started eight years ago. And I think that this is uh, our wish. This has been uh, my introduction. I know it deviates a little bit from what I wanted to say, but I hope it's still up to date and valid. If you, if we have some time left, I mean, if I do have some time, I'm open to your questions. Good afternoon, Małgorzata Chmielewska. I would like to ask you about the way to invent a simple method compared to an internet meme, how to convince the unconvinced people, because those who supported law and justice eight years ago uh, will never admit it. But what about those who have not decided yet? I suggest asking who of these people would you employ in your company nobody but perhaps you could help in share very simple information how much uh, pensioners lose something that does not require thinking perhaps you and your foundation will succeed that's uh, the invention for mass uh, uh, for, for the mass uh, we can share it with the organization me and Twitter uh, we in Twitter and Facebook where I'm every day I remember the main changes we have high inflation uh, well Turkey is Turkey is a European country but it's not a eurozone not a member state but it has higher inflation rate after seven eight years contrary to law and justice policy we have seen a slow down in economy what was it like during Gerek there were seven years of the growth on the expense of the future the cost of the future means uh, taking foreign debt. But spoiling the system that the economic growth rate depends on is an attempt to gain popularity at the expense of the future. We need to use figures but that's room for individual creation. It needs to be brief and always truth. I'm Olga Krzyżanowska and I've got the following question. I would like to refer to the statements of the young people who stepped onto the stage. Do you have a reflection after over 30 years? What would you do differently during the transition period? Do you regret anything? Would you do some processes in a different way? 
I have to say it's it's a standard question. People often people often ask this question, so I had t time to get ready to answer. How can you evaluate your activities through skillful comparison? And the comparison here is when you take the initial situation of Poland versus other countries and you consider indicators since 1990 for the period of the following 20, 30 years. What do we know about it? First and foremost, our situation was the worst among all countries in the region. In 1989, the inflation rate was around 20, 30, 40 months, 40 percent a month. We were a country that was bankrupt as a result of uh, debt and loans taken in the 1970s, and our economy was in a disastrous condition. We had never had such a situation before. That's why the first government's task, where I was responsible for economy transition and stabilization, was to prepare in a short time a package of acts to let Poland get away from the situation. Everybody can evaluate it for themselves. I just want to say that I received over 30 honorary doctor doctorates abroad and some of them in Poland in relation to my um, in to my original activity. We had the period of hyperinflation initially. There was no economic crisis, there was no economic increase, but then Poland started developing faster. And I can only say that I was a member of the government 1991-97, but in the meantime, we had solidarity. Uh, governing. They continued the reforms. The law and justice is the first party which takes Poland back when it comes to major reforms. They are real post-communists because they take us they take us back to communism. The, in these kinds of comparisons we can see that against other countries, Poland has been successful. And this is something we should rely on. There are no scientific studies referring to reliable um, tests. And something that uh, Lauren Justice activists claim that Poland is uh, ruined as a result of uh, acts uh, um, introduced uh, in 1989. Uh, referring to the performance we have just seen and people who implement major uh, breakthrough reforms. Ms. Thatcher was among of them, a brave, uh, wise woman. After her term of office, I visited the UK and I saw uh, inscriptions, Thatcher, and something in English. I speak English quite well, but I didn't understand it. I asked my English friends what it was all about, and they were ashamed to translate it. And that was in a civilized country. Well, that's no wonder. We deal with various animals. The nature has its variety. The society has its groups. Whenever there is freedom, they want to voice their opinions. This is natural. Although this is not something we should praise. OK, 
Okay, but I didn't answer. Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't answer your question. Based on the comparisons, I have to say that I have never found a country having the same original conditions and Poland and able to reach better results. Would it be better to extinguish fires slowly? Hyperinflation is like fire, we would burn. Would it be possible to transform the economy towards capitalism? It would definitely delay us because economic reforms is like shifting from uh, a good engine to a worse engine. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense. No comparative analysis that I am aware of has reached such a conclusion. I would like to ask uh, about uh, social expenditure, 500 plus uh, minors uh, pensions. We know that the pendulum is uh, swinging and the mechanisms tend to um, accelerate, strengthen spontaneously. My question is, are you aware of an example of a country where such uh, uh, helix uh, was uh, reversed. Yes, if we need, uh, that if we mean that uh, using violence uh, results in uh, um, a revolution, then we don't need it. It can be reversed, but we need to show to people that they do have a choice. Typically, people in Poland are not aware of the choice they have because nobody informs them about it. If we talk about public finance, what choice do we have? On one side, we've got expenditures and on the other one, taxes. We know that people would rather pay lower taxes. Everybody would definitely understand that it cannot be achieved by reducing expenditure. So, it's good to know the ratios of budget expenditures. Defense, typically between one and two. The Germans less than one. We live in the interesting times and we are really uh, concerned that the Germans spent too little on defense. We spent two. but over 20% on uh, social benefits. 500 plus is definitely much more than we spent on defense. I don't want to claim that we should uh, tell to the people wh uh, what uh, taxes are spent on. They should participate in a wise discussion. If you accept all expenditures, you accept higher taxes. But then we could discuss whether they say direct taxes, VET or any other ones. But the presentation needs to be uh, given in such a way that people can see the choice uh, and they must answer. Typically, people don't like higher taxes but typically they do not wonder or do, do not consider where higher uh, expenditure comes from. Lower injustice increased social expenditure in the category of uh, pensions. A half of the increase in the expenditure on pensions resulted from reducing the uh, retirement age. That is, more people retire and the expenditures go up. When we carry out a reasonable discussion, we should show it. 
That is what uh, professional NGOs should do. I established one of them. It's called Civic Development Forum. But if somebody thinks that 500 plus is extremely important from the man humanitarian point of view, uh, should we ask, uh, regardless of revenue, of income, should people who earn more money get it? Typically, there is the criterion key uh, in foreign countries if such benefits are offered. There is one more point I would like to make. It's good to say, all right, if we choose this model of uh, continuing the budget, what will the continuation look like? And what situation will people be in? Considering the conditions in uh, Poland, it will not be a bed of roses. When we maintain the deformed economic model, we'll have to accept many years of slowdown and the risk that having around 70% of 70% um, level of uh, that in Western countries uh, and we'll have to accept it. In 1989, we started from 30% and we reached 70% uh, and for Germany, it was 60. It happens. This is not an invented danger. There are two countries that uh, are stable or have been remaining stable in the West, uh, Italy and Greece. They no longer, they are no longer able to catch up with uh, Germany. It also can be related to higher immigration uh, to uh, richer countries from Poland. Summing up facts, figures and forecasts, in my opinion, will make the discussion meaningful and it will also reveal uh, what the politicians lie about. This is what I love doing. Professor, when eight years ago Lauren Justice was taking over the power, Minister Rostovsky, in his uh, statement for television, said there is no money and there will be no money. Over the period of uh, eight years, uh, we found money for social schemes, the minimum wage has uh, mm, increased. I would like to ask, from your point of view, what happened when the civic platform was ruling? There was no money for it. But now the situation has changed. What do you think about it? Yes, uh, Rosowski uh, was right, but uh, he did not put it in the right way. And we can see that he was right. Where is the money? Inflation. You need to remember that uh, since some policies uh, are implemented, some time lapses. And if the external situation allows, the time can be um, counted in years. Only after some time, the results of uh, bad uh, politics uh, can be revealed. In the 1970s, we were the country of um, prosperity and then a disaster. I did not announce a disaster, but we were pointing out what effects concerning economic 
increase could occur if such policy is continued. The fiscal policy and the increase in uh, um, invalid expenditure and increasing deficit contribute to increasing the public debt, which costs a lot. The second aspect is related to taking Poland back towards socialism. We have uh, mm, a high percentage of uh, state ownership, and this is a regression in the system. State-owned companies typically are affected by um, political um, impacts. We can think that competitions are a remedy, but, you know, that's not true. That's ridiculous. We used to have uh, competition-based uh, uh, socialism. We can announce competitions and they will uh, manage our goods. I can see a certain regression at the opposition side, and we, t we need to press them. I checked it, out, I checked it uh, recently on who was critical towards uh, nationalizing by law and justice. I refer to the petrochemical company and no party from the opposition side. Is this because they thought it was right? Or maybe they thought that if they use the word privatization, uh, they, they will not be uh, perceived positively. But they didn't have to use the word. They could just say we've got an increase of politicization of economy through uh, the extension of uh, state property. And then uh, the, the, they would lead to uh, appropriate associations. So I think with the part of the opposition, we can face the regression when they are talking about the system. So There will, there will, we will not have to do a lot to uh, reverse the achievements of law and justice. So it will be very important that the citizens should push the opposition to start doing it after the election. So the opposition is the same as the um, citizens are. So if the citizens uh, complain too much and they do nothing, um, the opposition will be exactly like this. So they will not implement any reforms. Uh, I hope uh, I have not affected the agenda. It's a great pleasure for me to speak. I have a question on uh, combating inflation. So let's assume optimistically that the post-democratic uh, opposition will win the election. They will gain power. However, there are the limitations. So the presidents will be from the Law and Justice Party. For at least 18 months, the National Bank of Poland is also uh, in the hands of the law and justice. So how, what would you recommend to the new government how to uh, combat the inflation and stagnation? So you have to depoliticize the economy. We need to restore competition. We need to extend the scope of private uh, property. And you can do it if you have majority in, in the parliament. And, um, and I don't think that the current president would veto such proposals. So when we are talking about the fight against the infl infl inflation, the main inflation maker, uh, President uh, Lapinski, if uh, if the, if the Land Justice Party loses, he will become a hawk. Sorry, hawk. 
So there must be some pressure. Media have to generate this pressure. Maybe the uh, press conferences w will last a shorter time. Uh, we will not see Glapinski and his uh, poor jokes. Jan Stefaniak. A lot of emotions uh, are stirred when we are talking about health care. And when the election is approaching, uh, these emotions are really high. So I would like you, Professor, to tell us about the existence of two sectors, the public one and the private one. Uh, health medical services uh, are not the market-based uh, services. This is the product that is guaranteed uh, by the Constitution, so there should be equal uh, access to health care. Health care should not be nice, shouldn't be a state or private. It just should be consolidated. It's like a semi-joke from me. So the question whether we should maintain these two sectors operating in parallel because we cannot afford to pay for the uh, actual needs for medical services and uh, we will have to ra uh, ration uh, access to physicians. So I would like to hear your opinion on this. To be honest, I cannot see the problem where you see the problem. What does it, what do you mean consolidated? Why shouldn't they compete? Why these two different uh, forms of ownership should not compete? I cannot see any argument against this. So what? Should we either nationalize uh, uh, the, um, the, the private ones or we should uh, privatize uh, the public? sector. The most important is the choice for citizens, even if medical services are paid from taxes. And we reach uh, the second part of financing. In general, there are two alternative forms, uh, even three. Private, direct payment, uh, health insurance and transport insurance or taxes. Some people uh, say if people who think taxes are too high, they have to consider whether they would like the taxes to be even higher. Uh, when uh, such services are rendered, what is most important is uh, the choice. Just like with the rating agencies, there are a rating agencies that define whether the specific uh, country incurs credits uh, in the right way. Maybe there should be some rating agencies uh, that would uh, assess uh, uh, health service providers. Vera Modzelewska. Tak. I would like to remind the time when Professor, soon after we uh, regained freedom, Professor proposed that this poverty should be turned into the 13% tax payable by everyone. Can you remember this, Professor? Executive uh, transformations. So if we have a huge state-owned sector, Poland could become Belarus. Because in Belarus you can develop private uh, companies, but privatization is not popular. One of the aberrations that are quite popular, quite common, and disseminated by some politicians, some 
disseminated by law and justice party. So it's about ownership-based uh, transformations. Uh, these people do not understand the weight uh, of uh, such transformations. They do not want to use the word privatization because they are afraid that this word will stir up uh, uh, emotions. I, I was talking about the ownership transformations. Language is, ve language is very important. It stirs some specific emotions. So let's get back to your question. In Poland, privatization was not too fast. It was too, small, uh, too slow in comparison to the Czech or Czech former Czechoslovakia. When it comes to Łódź, it's not a, a problem of privatization that Łódź had to change the economic profile. It's an issue of competitiveness, protectionism. In the current Łódź, it has completely different and much better economic structures. Uh, where the, the products made in which uh, factories uh, were exported to to the economic area apart from the traditional industries in which so these changes I think uh, should rather cause pride not complaints. Viktor Szczepański, good, up, good evening. I would like to uh, ask you a question during the previous uh, panel. Politicians were talking how to depoliticize economy and they were also talking about strategic sector and uh, strategic in enterprises. And I would like you to uh, address uh, uh, the issue of strategic companies, strategic to the country, and whether uh, uh, they are really strategic and whether the privatization, uh, na nationalization of such enterprises is necessary. It's a very good question. But this is this uh, this word that causes so many emotions. Uh, strategic, first they have to clarify what it means to be strategic. It's, uh, they are raising some emotions by using specific words. So uh, when they say strategic, they mean very important. This is my assumption. So this is an argument that um, the, they should be supervised by the politicians, by the officials, and it would be poor supervision or whether they should be under the competent supervision of the pri private owners who have interest to uh, make sure that these companies are pros prosperous. So if we assume that the word strategic means what I have just said, the conclusion mm, is different. The opposition is most afraid of the Law and Justice Party. They are afraid that the Law and Justice Party will be uh, complaining that they are not patriotic enough because there is not enough nationalization. Another question. I would like to refer to the question of the previous speaker because uh, I feel that you have not quite answered this question because we asked you to give uh, us some examples of countries, states that delivered um, bad politics and they followed the wrong direction. Um, but uh, at the end, uh, there were mm, not huge problems. So uh, I heard uh, of a negative example of uh, Greece. So I would like to hear some positive examples. I would like to see that there is some hope. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you asking me about this transformation after 1989? Or are you asking me about the current scenarios? because uh, I don't quite know what you mean. I'm asking you about examples of the past when uh, there was, let's say, a state, a country um, that followed the wrong direction by delivering wrong policies, but uh, they over this, this country has overcome the problems uh, and it wasn't a, a revolutionary 
process. Okay, let's look at this situation. Well, this the, the economy always uh, depends on the competence of the ruling politicians. Uh, we are not always sentenced to the long-term stagnation or the uh, inflation problems. So forecasts I know, prepared by OECD, they state that the long-term growth uh, in Poland can reach uh, two to three. It's less than we had in the past, but it's still not stagnation. It's slightly faster than the forecasts for OECD countries. I don't know whether these forecasts are right or wrong. It's a matter for another discussion. I would like to add that what's very important for the future economic scenarios uh, depends uh, on the quality uh, quality of the, of the economic um, know-how uh, by the uh, future ruling party, whether they will follow the law and justice model or not. So, uh, whether they will stop, uh, they, they will depoliticize the economy and they will be more focused on private ownership. And this is the reserve that is needed. Secondly, if the current opposition becomes the ruling party, it's, there's quite a chance that we will uh, receive the funds from the Union for the National Recovery Plan. So, from the economic perspective, not just political uh, perspective, it is meaningful. It is important. Who will win the election? I will repeat something again. Land justice is the first party that that has uh, um, that, that has taken over um, courts, including prosecutors' office, and this is against democracy. And I think that if the current uh, opposition wins, uh, they will restore and strengthen independence and professionality of the courts and prosecutors office of course uh, of course the politicians the the, the the ruling party the current ruling uh, party and the prosecutors and judges uh, will have to be held accountable for this thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for the questions we would like to invite you to follow social media uh, of the professor and the civil uh, civil uh, civil development forum uh, in the lobby you can actually purchase uh, professors by uh, books by professor Balcerowicz thank you to recognize it may look like this or like this it may be a burden but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless but if it means this for one person and this for someone else. Maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels, how it tastes, and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything and if we all fight for it it will eventually bring us together
Jestem z zawodu lekarzem. Zajmowałam się diagnostyką chorób nowotworowych. W Białorusi zajmowałam się mikrobiologią i molekularną biologią. Byłem nauczycielem szkoły podstawowej. Naszym celem jest budowanie umiejętności, które są ważne na polskim rynku pracy. Szybko nabierają takiej pewności siebie, bardzo szybko się uczą. Wszystko możliwe, kiedy starasz się. Każdy wybór ma swoje konsekwencje. Dziś na kazaniu o takich jak ty mówili, że to morderczynie. A wiesz, że ta, która ci pomogła trafi za kraty? Trzeba mieć sumienie. Jak mogłaś to zrobić własnej matce? Aborcja to najgorsza zbrodnia. Gdybym ja podjęła taką decyzję, nie byłoby cię tutaj. Organy państwa nie będą przyglądać się temu obojętnie. Życie i zdrowie kobiety jest najważniejsze. Stop kryminalizacji aborcji. Kobieta decyduje. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Pan Zbigniew Chodys. Zgadza się. Dla znajomych Zbyszek. Serio? Zbyszek. Nadchodzące wybory są zbyt ważne, żeby zostawić je bez kontroli. Dołącz do obywatelskiej kontroli wyborów. Zróbmy wybory bez picu.